Hey, my name is Eric Robertson, and in this video, you're going to learn everything that you need to know about Monroe's Motivated Sequence. Monroe's Motivated Sequence is an outline structure for creating persuasive speeches, and by the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to use it, all the different components that go into this particular structure, and also we'll give you some examples for what this looks like when you put it into practice. So let's go. Monroe's Motivated Sequence, a step-by-step -step method to organize your persuasive speech. So what you can expect from this lecture is first, we're going to discuss how this is useful. Second, we're going to discuss the structure of Monroe's motivated sequence. And then after that, we're going to look at four different examples. And finally, you'll talk about an awesome bonus. It's actually uh, an outline that you can use where you can just plug and play to make this work. So first of all, how is this useful? Well, Monroe, uh, his name was Alan Monroe, and in the mid-1930s, he was a communication professor. And he took the basic functions of a sales speech, because in the 1930s, when people were talking about persuasion, especially in the United States, a lot of what was discussed was specifically sales. So they took the basic functions of a sales speech, and they changed them into a step-by-step -step method for creating persuasive speeches. This initial format for a sales speech was to gain the attention, create interest, after that, create a desire from your audience, and then last, get them to take action. He converted this over into what he named Monroe's motivated sequence, which is first gain their attention, then establish a need or a problem. After that, satisfy that need. So figure out a way to satisfy that need. And then last, uh, create a visualization. So try and get them to imagine themselves when the problem has been solved. And just like with the sales speech, the last thing we want them to do is take some sort of action. So let's talk about each one of these individually. Again, we have attention, the need, satisfaction, visualization, and the action step for Monroe's motivated sequence. We'll go through each of these one by one. First, the attention step. Typically when you're gaining the attention of your audience when uh, delivering a persuasive speech, there are a couple of things that you'll see no matter what that will happen. I have some other videos that we've created um, that discuss different ways of gaining an audience's attention, so we're not gonna go too into that today. We'll give some examples also uh, later on in this video. But first thing, you gain the attention of the audience in the very first few sentences, really trying to draw them in and make them feel like they really want to hear more uh, about this particular topic. After that, revealing the topic of the speech, so trying to draw them in, and then after that, revealing really what this topic is about. It's hard to gain someone's attention when you just state what the title of your topic is. And the first thing you wanna do is really draw them in, and then after that, you're revealing where you're going to be going with the speech. After that, discuss how the speech is directly related to the audience. So why is this audience something that this, or why is this topic something that this audience specifically needs to hear? How is this going to really affect them and their lives? After that, the speaker is going to establish his or her credibility. Typically, when establishing credibility, we're looking at two different things. One is your own personal credentials. So what research have you done on this? Um, do you have any, any, anything about this where you've actually researched it to become an expert on it? Or what experience do you have on this particular topic? So do you have direct, personal, firsthand experience on this particular topic? So what research have you done or what experience do you have? And this should be something that's different than the audience because you need to either know more or have a different perspective than your audience or else there really isn't a point for them to listen to you. After that, they're going to provide a preview of what the speech will cover. Uh, again, this could be really specific. They could actually say what the, the different steps of this particular speech would be, or it could be a little bit more general. In a public speaking class, we're usually looking for something that's more specific. So um, saying, first, we're going to discuss the need. After that, we'll discuss a solution for this need. We'll show you what the solution looks like in place. And finally, how you can take action today. Something like that might be an example of a preview, or you could be using the topic uh, and kind of doing that same thing, but infusing the topic into each of those steps. Uh, but sometimes this is a, shows up a little bit differently in uh, less formal types of speeches, but usually it'll be pretty um, kind of like one long sentence with a couple of commas separating each of the main points of the speech when you see it in a public speaking class. So just to summarize the attention step, we're going to gain interest, connect with the audience, establish your credibility, and then from there provide direction for where the speech is going to go. Our next step is the need. The need describes a problem that currently exists. So really there's two types of problems. There's my problems when you're thinking about you as an audience member, and also as the audience member, there are the problems of things that I care about. So really start thinking about this. Whoever your audience is, you might be directly addressing problems that they have, or you might be either showing them or kind of restating problems of things that might not directly affect them, but these are things that they could care about. Okay, so you really need to make a decision where you wanna go with this, but there are really two types of problems in a speech like this, things that your audience is directly experiencing now themselves, or things that they could 
you could get them to care about that maybe they're not personally experiencing, but you would they would care enough where they would want to eventually take action. You want to get your audience to believe that a problem exists, but also get your audience to care. So this is usually done through research. What you're doing here is you're showing through research that the problem exists. Even if they have personal firsthand experience, a lot of times it's beneficial to show research that this is a widespread problem, not just with them, uh, with, with the individuals in the audience, but also a little bit more widespread. Um, and you want to get them to care. So for example, if you're giving a speech where you're discussing stress, it's not enough just to discuss how stress exists, but we also have to get them to care by showing the negative effects that stress can possibly have, maybe negative uh, physical health effects or negative mental health effects. So you have to show that it exists and then also take it a step further and show the impacts to get them to care. So just like we said here, discuss the impacts of the problem, not just that it exists. Okay, so you have to get us to care about that problem. You have to demonstrate that this actually has real impacts that cause some sort of uh, negativity or either lack or suffering or something like that. So in the needs step, we establish that a problem exists and we make the audience care. In the satisfaction step, what you're trying to do here is propose an action that will solve or improve the problem discussed in the need. So essentially, this is the plan. This is the thing that you're going to do in order to solve that problem that you brought up initially. Now, if you were in one of my public speaking classes, I would really recommend that you're talking about one problem and one solution for that problem. What I've seen is when it gets a little more complicated and people are bringing up multiple negative issues in the need step, uh, then the plan has to address those and then some get addressed better than others. What I would say is just look for one big problem, focus there, and focus your plan on exactly solving that need that you've established. So show how this plan has worked in past or similar situations. Again, this is an opportunity for research. You're showing how it works, but supported through research and really trying to convince your audience that this is something that will truly solve for that need, for that problem that you've established. It might be analogous, so it might be something similar, um, or it might be a smaller size, maybe uh, something in a sample that would be representative, or even something very similar where we're just doing this again. Um, but again, research is going to be supporting your, your plan here and showing that it works and how it works. You're also going to discuss the role the audience would play in the plan. Uh, sometimes, let's say, for example, you're discussing a charity and kind of how a charity's programs work. Uh, you still need to discuss not just how they work and how they've worked in the past, but try and get the audience to start thinking about themselves as part of that solution. So the satisfaction step discusses an action that can be taken to improve or solve the problem presented in the need. Some problems can be solved through the satisfaction step. Others, we are just making an improvement to them and just kind of addressing them and, and making slow changes to them. Either one is good enough. It's just the question of can you get your audience to take some sort of action. After we have discussed the problem, we've shown a way to solve the problem. Our next step is the visualization step. Here, what you're trying to do is describe what it would be like after the action has been taken. So after the plan, what does the world look like? So this helps the audience see what a better world it would be in the lives of those who are affected. So you're trying to get people to see the promised land. You're trying to get people to see what the world looks like or what their lives look like after they've taken that particular action, after the plan has been put into place. This is supposed to be motivating them because they see the positive change. Let's say you're talking about uh, getting someone to exercise more. You're trying to see how, uh, how their body would look. You're trying to get them to feel how much more energy they would have you know, after they've done this for a month. right? So you're trying to fast forward post plan after the satisfaction step to get people to understand what their lives would be like after they've taken this action. This section allows the audience to get excited and imagine a better future. So again, the visualization step helps us imagine how much better life would be once the problem has been solved. The last step in Monroe's motivated sequence is the action step. The action step gets the audience to take action and demonstrate commitment. So now that you've shown that there's a problem, here's how we can solve the problem. Here's what the world would look like or here's what your life would look like after you've taken that, uh, that action. Now we're like, okay, how do we get people involved right now? So here we're getting the audience to take action and demonstrate a commitment. And they've heard the information, and now you as the speaker are giving them an opportunity to get involved. Okay, so you should be 99% sure that at least some of the members of your audience will take this action. If you can't say that at least a couple people in your audience are guaranteed to do what it is that you're asking in this section, then your speech is, is put together incorrectly and it's just not delivering uh, what it is that your audience needs. So you should be convinced, 99% sure, like almost 100, pretty much 100% sure, that your audience is going to do this action. 
we'll give you some examples of what this would look like when we go through examples of different speech topics. But uh, really, you're looking at some sort of action. So writing something down, raising a hand to take the first step, uh, signing a petition, something like that, signing up to go to a meeting, whatever. Uh, but in this case, you're looking for action as a way to show commitment to get them involved in whatever that satisfaction step was. So the action step invites the audience to demonstrate a commitment to the solution. So here are some examples of what this would look like when we actually have a speech topic and we put everything through Monroe's motivated sequence. So first we will look at, um, just as a reminder, all of these are going to be examples, assuming that this, the audience is a room full of college students. So you might have a totally different audience if you're doing this outside of, outside of college. Um, but here our first topic is going to be, my audience should meditate. We might gain our attention by telling a story about stress, uh, being stressed for classes, discuss how meditating helped you and how you've also done research, and then provide a preview. Okay? So that might be the way that you gain attention. After that, discussing statistics on college students and how many experience stress, and then discuss health and academic impacts of stress in the need step. The satisfaction step would discuss how to meditate, providing research illustrating brain changes of meditation, and also discussing research on meditation and grades and health. The visualization step could get the audience to imagine not being stressed. Also some potential other things, right, of potentially uh, having them imagine their grades going up, things like that. And then last, the action step would be to raise a hand to commit to downloading a meditation app. And you'd say what that app is, be really specific, and then the raising of the hand gets them to commit to taking that next step. Here's another one topic, my audience should cook at home. In the attention step, you could provide a vivid discussion of delicious food, so really try and get their mouths watering. After that, reveal the topic and then discuss how you learned to cook and how it changed your life, and then also provide a preview of what's to come in the speech. In the need step, you could discuss statistics on college students and how they suffer financially. You could also discuss health and academic impacts of eating unhealthy food. In the satisfaction step, you could discuss where to learn to cook and also discuss experiences of people who took these exact steps. You could discuss impacts of those who eat at home more. Okay, so here we're discussing exactly what they did, uh, where to cook, how to learn how to cook. In the visualization step, you're getting the audience to imagine feeling, feeling good, looking good, having more money, right? Into the future. So this is after they've been cooking at home for a while. What does their life look like? In the action step, you would then tell, maybe have them tell the person next to you what you will cook tonight at home. Again, you're getting a commitment here to take the first step toward that satisfaction step. Another example could be, my audience should buy a reusable straw. In the attention step, you could discuss a story about a turtle and how it dies due to a straw coming out of its nose or something. Uh, you would reveal the topic and then discuss how you use reusable straws and also that you've done some research. Following that, you would provide a preview. The need step, you would discuss the shocking numbers of how many straws are used and then the impacts on animals and the environment. So notice plastic by itself is not necessarily bad, right? If there's a lot of straws, like that's not necessarily bad on its own. The negativity here is that there's animals that are dying um, and that it's impacting the environment. The satisfaction step here, you would show the reusable straw that you're trying to get people to use. You discuss how it works, discuss the cost, and then the impact that just one straw could have. After that, you'll have the visualization step where you get the audience to imagine cleaner water and really no more animals suffering. So healthy animals, they're thriving, um, and really it doesn't cost you very much. You're actually saving money probably in the long run, and this, there's no more suffering, which I think most people would get behind. And then the action step, you're going to write down on a piece of paper the name of the reusable straw so you can go ahead and buy it later. Okay, so one more, um, my audience should help people have access to clean water. So the attention step could maybe ask a question if your audience has ever had to worry about not having clean water. After that, you reveal the topic, you discuss how you've done research and how you found out about this topic, and then you provide a preview. In the need step, you could discuss statistics of the number of people without access to clean water, and then discuss health impacts of unhealthy water, right? So just saying that there's 10 million people who don't have access to clean water, I think it's more than that, but let's say that you say that, uh, that's not far enough. What you need to do is show the research of, okay, why is this bad? How does consuming unhealthy or unclean water uh, negatively impact the health of individuals? What types of diseases could they potentially contract? What do those diseases do to people? How does that impact children? Stuff like that is really where you need to go with these types of topics. In the satisfaction step, you could discuss the organization Charity Water and discuss how donations of time and money can help individuals get clean water. Now notice this is one of those where uh, it's not something that's probably directly affecting your audience, 
right? But this is something that you're trying to get them to care about this issue, even though it doesn't directly affect them. So it's a different type of problem than the ones that we've been talking about up until this point. After that, the visualization step is trying to get the audience to imagine cleaner water, healthier and happier people. So you go back to maybe some of those examples of people who are suffering before and now talk about how they're able to function better, how they're healthier, how they're not suffering, how children are no longer suffering just from unnecessary, unclean water. After that's the action step, so maybe sign up in the back and raise your hand now if you're going to help. So uh, you would probably be trying to get them either to eventually be donating time or money, um, but here you're getting them to commit just by raising a hand, and then maybe after the speech, you have them go over and do a sign-up sheet. I don't think that it's ever really a good idea, especially in a smaller room, to pass around a sign-up sheet. Quite often this makes it so you lose a lot of the momentum that you have in your speech, and it makes it so people stop paying attention to what it is that you're saying when those sheets start to come around. So there's a bonus outline in the bottom here. So this is a YouTube video. If it's embedded somewhere, go to the actual video itself. And then look, I've got a, a link here that just makes it so you can use this particular structure. It's a link to a, a Dropbox hosted file. It's a Word document that has all of this. So you can type directly on it and has even more suggestions where you can get uh, really specific with this. So if that's helpful, then go ahead and download it. And again, today we cover just how this is useful. We discussed the structure of Monroe's motivated sequence, four different examples, and then there was also that bonus outline. So again, this is Monroe's motivated sequence. It's a step-by-step -step method to organize your persuasive speech. Thank you so much.